Hi there and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Concept of this series, we're working our way progressively through every animal in the Zoopedia with the hopes of adding all of them by the end. We're 51 animals in by this point and midway through the seas, so still a long way to go. We're also up to placing our first large exhibit animal, which is the butterflies, and our first Oceania animal in this zoo too. Before we get into that, something I've built off camera. Last week we built an enclosure that houses three of the cats and it was on this semi-circular sort of space. Well, that left a bit of a gap in the middle. So what I've put in here is another facilities building. Only a small convenience point, so just one food and drink stall in here. Around the back, I've set up some picnic tables. There is a path under here and then I've used grass roof tiles to cover that up. So it is at least functional, this space. A nice pit stop between the sea lions and the cats. With that in, we are up to a new animal. Well, actually, it's an exhibit species, clouded sulphur, and that's a butterfly. So we are going to build the butterfly exhibit. As tradition with the exhibit species, going to build this off camera and we'll do a jump cut right back to when that's done. Nestled behind the pangolin habitat, we've now got a butterfly house. Rather than doing anything fancy, I've gone rather traditional with this and kept it as a very basic traditional building. Nice and light with the skylights though, and the full length windows. With the building so basic, I did do some planet gardening around the front, but for the main feature, let's take a look inside. I've got an anti-space at the front so the butterflies don't escape. Then when you go through the PVC curtain, you're into the main butterfly house. I've added a few extra plants in here. It feels a little empty with the ones that are provided when you put the exhibit down. It's a little hard to tell, but I do have all five varieties of the butterflies in here. So technically that's five more animals added to the zoo. There's two of them. I would identify them, but alas, I'm terrible at remembering the names for the butterflies. So it's just two pretty colorful butterflies. From what I've been told, the butterflies are very good at earning you some cash. So that's a bonus. And I've got to say, I think the understated structure I've made for housing the butterflies, it fits in very well with this area. Just a little understated so we're not taking attention away from the cats or the sea lions. Anyway, with that out of the way, I think we're on to our next animal. Let's take a look what that's going to be. Next is the common death adder. Death adder is our first Australian animal and not far behind them is the common wombat, also from Australia. So why not put them together? Not in the same enclosure, obviously. <laughs> that wouldn't go down well. But yeah, I think we'll skip common death adder for now and move straight on to the common warthog. Another interspecies animal, but if you notice, we've actually added everything but the plain zebra. So, common warthog, gonna go with the plain zebra. And plain zebra also gets interspecies enrichment from the scimitar horned oryx. So, we're gonna add those two. Zebra, warthog and oryx are all African grassland animals, so going with a little tiny bit of an African theme. I've reused the fence that we used on the other grassland animals habitat a couple of weeks ago. The guest barrier fence, this is a new one I've made comprising wooden poles and the plaster rock piece that came with the Africa pack. Hard shelter in this enclosure is a straight copy of the one that we created with the other grassland animals habitat a couple of weeks ago. My thought is, if you create something that you really like, why not reuse it? That's one of the reasons we've got the blueprint tool after all, isn't it? Terrain wise, these animals wanted a lot of grass, both short and long variety. So just covering up some of the soil that I'd initially put in. I like to add soil, but hey, the animals don't like it. We take it out. Kind of a similar situation with the vegetation. I think it was the warthogs were quite tolerant of more vegetation, but the oryx was not at all. So kind of limited what I could use here. Always seems to be the grassland animals are the ones that they just don't like any bushes or trees or anything like that. Which, you know, I get it. They're, they're grassland animals. There wouldn't be a big forest or anything. But if you actually go to the grasslands or look at pictures of the grasslands, there's plenty of trees and bushes and vegetation. I think the game's got it wrong in that regard. Maybe the buffalo grass could be reduced in the amount of plant range it uses up or something. I know they took the rocks out of that years ago because rocks used to count as vegetation as well. I think it would just go some ways to letting us get a bit more imaginative with the grassland animals habitats. Anyway, here's the completed enclosure. That's another three animals into the zoo. We've got zebra, 
Oryx and Common Warthog. Oryx is a shy animal, so I am a little worried they're going to get too stressed if we have too many visitors. But because I've reduced the visitor numbers down, not many venture up to this side of the zoo, so we might be okay. Zebras are neutral, so they should be alright. The other animal in here, the Common Warthog. They're confident with humans, so definitely shouldn't be any issues with those guys at all. Something I did do to mitigate it a little bit, I've put all the enrichment items, none of them are by the fence, so I've noticed animals tend to traverse between the enrichment items and that's about it, so they'll probably be keeping well away from the guest fencing anyway. That's about it for this enclosure, so let's move on. Next is Common Wombat. So, what are our options? They can either go in right next to this habitat we've just created, it's a small-ish space, but maybe bigger than what the wombats need. We could put them over the rows here. That might suit better and then save this space next to the other habitat for something a little bigger. So wombat habitat, I'm making this into a cage structure, similar to how I made the lemur habitat. Because it's an atypical space, not on a grid and not square, it can take a little while to get it all to slot into the space. But I think making some of these habitats into a cage structure, it adds a bit of variety to the zoo rather than it all being just open plan with a barrier around the side. I remember when they added the Europe pack, I think that was the first time they added the panels in. So normal building walls you could use as a panel that isn't on a grid and it really changed the game in making these sort of structures. It's so much easier now and you can get a lot more creative with it. Safe to say this is mostly panel and uh, metal beam construction for this one here. The roof was the only part that I wasn't entirely happy with because I made it a flat roof and normally I have a bit of a pitch on it. But we've been doing so many pitch roofs lately I thought I'd give it a go doing a flat one. Hey ho, it didn't turn out quite like I wanted it with that so I might go back and change it problem with that is the more I build up the zoo I've got a list almost as long as my arm now of things that I want to change and going back doesn't seem an option because of the momentum of adding another animal every week well adding several animals every week just to get this thing going and not lose steam before we get to the end in some ways when you're working on projects like this that have something definite at the end that you want to achieve it's better not to sweat the small stuff, just let it go, keep on with the momentum and get yourself to the end before you get entirely frustrated with it. So maybe that's the way we go with things when it's not quite like I wanted it to be. I guess we'll see. Hey ho. Wombat was another animal that didn't like a lot of vegetation inside their enclosure, so I was stuck leaving this rather empty inside. I think going forward, the animals that don't like a lot of vegetation I either need to figure something out for this or get better at rock work. That's the only option I've got. So here we go with the common wombat. A light wood modern shelter for the wombat here and big open windows on all sides, apart from the back obviously, which is bringing a lot of light into the enclosure itself so it doesn't feel too dark and dingy in here. Ooh, a couple of guests here already. Why is it some of them have such massive noses? It's very odd. Anyway, wombats seem very happy with their space. Cute little animals that they are. I've noticed unless they're sleeping, they do an awful lot of standing about. They don't actually sit down. <laughs> Maybe that's their natural behaviour. When they want to sleep, I've added this little hutch at the back. Perfect size for a wombat. So that's the gist of it in here. Not a complex build once I got the building made. I'd say it's time to move on to our next animal. Now the wombat's in, I haven't forgotten about the common death adder. They will be going next door with another facilities building. But before we get to that, I think we should head on to the cougar. Cougar, one of my favorite cats in the game, I've got to say. The question is, where are we gonna fit them in? I feel like we need to put the cougars back with the other cats. It doesn't seem fair that all the cats from last episode get to hang out and the cougars over the other side of the zoo or something, so... How about we put them in this space behind the cat enclosure? That might work. So cougars, like most cats in Planet Zoo, there's only two of them in an enclosure. If there's any more than that, they start fighting. That being said, they need a lot of space. 
North American animal here and I know cougars can live in mountainous ranges so what I'm doing with the landscape here is making it quite a mountainous terrain. Something to bear in mind with cougars is they're very sneaky animals and they love escaping over high walls so you have to be super careful with the walls and make sure it's high enough. For theming with this habitat I've gone with a mountainy forest look. So a lot of natural wards, making use of a log barrier here between the guests and the mesh panel fencing which is meant to keep the cougars in. For rock work, because this is meant to be mountainous, there's a lot of rock work in this habitat. The key thing with this, like I've mentioned before, most of the animals cannot traverse the rocks. They just can't climb on it. So you have to remember that when you're putting it in, that most likely the animals won't be able to, to walk up and down the rocks. I've planned for that by making the space bigger than it probably needed to be. The cougars need about 900 to 1000 meters squared. This is a little more than that, but I was aware of the fact that because I'm putting a lot of rocks in, they won't be able to traverse those rocks and that will take away from that space that's allocated. Another way to get around this, I've added climbable platforms that traverse down the rocks. So at least the cougars have got something they can walk on to get from the top of the enclosure to the bottom. Obviously you want them by the bottom because that's closer to the guests so the guests are going to get a better view. For trees and such like, I really went to town with the trees on this one. I don't think you can do a North American habitat like this justice without putting heaps of trees in. So I made it work. A nice change from all the grassland empty habitats I've been working on recently. Nice playing planet landscape architect for a while. So here's the completed cougar habitat. Certainly rougher terrain than we've been used to with some of the recent builds. A nice change, I'd say. It'd be nice getting back to a forest biome. There's one of our cougars right now. Very sweet kitty, in this game at least. Not in some of the other games I've played. They can be quite mean in those ones. I think this is one of the longest habitats we've made to date in this zoo. Plenty of room for guests to spread out, hopefully. With all the platforms I've got going on in here and stuff, hopefully that means they get a good view from any angle as well. All the trees and stuff, hopefully making the cougars feel at home here. Those platforms do help them traverse the terrain. Although the cougars do get caught up a little more than some of the other animals. Some weird angles occasionally as they're traversing up rocks and stuff. And no, we're not watching you poop for the video. <sighs> no. They're always doing that at the wrong time. Let's see, what's the other cougar up to? Ah, that's better. Scratching a tree. That's a tree enrichment item. So it looks like a normal tree, but it's actually an enrichment piece. And I love the way it just fits into the landscape. Something else I haven't mentioned yet. We've got the little shelter up at the back here. This is one I created years ago. I think for the doll sheep originally. I feel like it fits in well with this landscape. That's it for the cougar. But there is something else to look at. I've gone ahead and put the common death adder in. So it's back over to this side of the zoo, right next to the common wombat. I've basically copied the style of this building and created a facilities building next door. Inside here, we've got two toilets, always two toilets. Also some vending machines and ATMs. And then over the other side is the new exhibit. So, common death adder. Much easier to see this one. Not a lot of undergrowth like we usually get. Oop, too far. Let's zoom back out there. So there we go, second snake in the zoo. You'll notice in here, I've left space for two more exhibit animals. That's because we've got two more Australian animals coming up soon. For exhibits, I feel it's better to put them together than have them all over the zoo, just individual. So we'll leave these clothes for now until we get to those animals and then drop them in when we get to them. That's 11 new species in today, if we're counting all five of the butterflies. That's 62 animals in total in the zoo now out of, I think it's about 150 odd in the game. So we're not even halfway there yet, but we're close. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we've added today. See you next time.